Hi everyone, welcome to my driveway. Uh, I'm Logan and this is my channel, Watch Me Work. What I'm going to be doing today is I'm going to be replacing uh, the hub on uh, my Suzuki. Uh, this is basically the same procedure for any uh, 4x4 locking hub, be it manual or automatic locking. Uh, these hubs here are actually vacuum locking hubs and they do still work, but uh, I don't trust them to keep working forever because I take this vehicle off-road a lot and the vacuum lines are in a spot where they could catch on something. They've already been kind of mangled. So um, what I did, so I went out and I bought some of these, um, well I ordered them, they're manual locking hubs so I can choose between uh, four-wheel drive and two-wheel drive uh, as I require so I can guarantee that they will lock and unlock when I want them to. Uh, this isn't really a huge job, but I did just have to go to the store and get some uh, external Torx bits because your vehicle may be different, but mine has these awful uh, external Torx uh, fasteners. Um, and this actually doesn't fit very well, but I figure with a little bit of hammering and a little bit of fiddling, I should be able to get these guys off. That sounds terrible. Uh, I should be able to remove these fasteners. Now in my case, I actually have to replace these fasteners with, um, with the ones that my new hubs came with. Uh, for you, you may be able to reuse your fasteners because uh, you, you might not be actually changing your hubs with a different type like I am. You might be changing them just for the sake of replacing broken ones. And if you are, that's, that's all fine too. Changing the hubs on any vehicle like this is pretty similar process. They're not all the same, but they're all pretty much the same. Like They all mount in essentially the same way. Uh, I believe most of them are uh, six fasteners, like this one is. Once we get these out of there, I should just be able to pull that off, but if not, I do have a chisel and a hammer. Um, I'm really hoping I won't have to pull the wheel for this, um, because if I have to get a chisel into there, I might actually have to pull the wheel, and that's, it adds a little bit of work. It's not a ton, obviously, but it's just something I'd rather not do if I don't need to. This one I already beat up a little bit because I was trying to figure out how to remove it with the wrong tool earlier. Instead of having to go, okay, so I can feel that this is pretty loose, so I'm not gonna need to, uh, I'm not gonna need to manhandle this hub to remove it, which is a huge bonus. So that 
should just come right off. There you go. You'll notice there's a lot of grease inside of there. Um, when you put your new hubs on, you're gonna wanna grease this whole area, all the splines, all the inside of your new hub. What I'm gonna do with mine, it's not, it's not actually grease. Uh, I've got this uh, Molly Coat uh, D321R spray, which is, um, it's kind of a really high-end uh, anti-friction coating spray. It's a long-term uh, spray. So I'm just gonna use this. You probably don't have access to this stuff and usually I don't either, but I thought I'd give it a shot because it's a really interesting anti-friction spray. Gotta make sure I don't get it on my brakes. The last thing you want is an anti-friction compound on your brakes. This is kind of like a gray, kind of a gray grease. Uh, so now I've got it all in there as well. Um, I'm just gonna put these on. The orientation of them, it's not really important because your wheels are gonna rotate anyway. So don't worry about the logo being right side up or not. They did give me this little piece of paper here. Now, the original one doesn't have a gasket on it, or does it? Let's see here. Uh, I don't think so. Oh, no it does. So the original one does have a gasket on it. Um, I'm actually gonna try to reuse this if I can instead of that ugly, crappy cardboard one they gave me in the kit. If this thing's not too damaged, if I can even remove it. Doesn't look like it wants to come off there easily. There we go. Ah, that's why they gave it to me. So mine has these little tabs uh, that I could cut off and reuse this thing, but I mean, that's, that's more effort than it's really worth. I'll just use the cardboard one they gave me. Uh, I don't like that it's cardboard, and I also don't like that it sticks out. But that's just me being, being anal, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna coat this thing in the spray, too. There you go. So now it's coated in the anti-friction spray. I'll place it on. And I've got brand new fasteners here. So that's what I'm going to use. Um, they came with a kit, so I may as well use them. Geez, they really don't make this easy, do they? All right, so you can't really see this uh, very well, but so for the, for my case here, these screws. They don't want to go in past this, this outer piece of the hub here. Uh, so I'm going to have to take this, I don't know, chrome cover off. Uh, this did come with more screws. Uh, I guess I should have taken that as a hint that I was going to have to do something with this. Uh, so I'm going to go walk over to my garage and I'll just grab a, 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 a bit that fits in here and we'll get this out. 
All right, so I got my Torx screwdriver. Just gonna take these out. The company only put two of them in there temporarily to hold this in place. Now, why they designed it like this, I couldn't tell you. Why they made it so this piece was round and overhang where the bolts have to go, no idea. I guess we'll know in a minute when it all comes apart. So this is what it looks like inside, in case you're curious. Just a big ring here, locks into the other one, the outside of this one. Fairly simple. So we'll take our gasket and our and our hub. And I'm gonna take at least one of these fasteners. Now I'm doing this in such a way to hold the gasket in place. Just so it doesn't run away on me when I go to put it all together. Get a couple of threads on there. Just enough to hold it in place. Now, because these don't go, um, because these don't go nicely with the cap on, uh, I'm gonna have to fully install and tighten these before I put the faceplate back on. Otherwise, we won't be able to get the rest of the screws in. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll get all six of these in. Now there's probably a torque value for these, if I had to guess, um, but I don't know what it is. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm just gonna tighten them until they feel like they were about as tight as the last ones that came off. Using my calibrated torquing hands, that's what we're gonna do. When it comes time to take these out, if that ever happens, it's gonna be a lot easier because I have, uh, I have a little bit more faith in these sorts of uh, hex screws than I do in those external Torx fasteners that it came with. But then again, this vehicle is 20 something years old and it came out easily enough, so how much can I really complain, right? Now, when you're tightening something like this, you always want to go in a star pattern. That way the clamping force applied is similar all the way around. So we just did these three. Now we'll do the other three. I guess I'll start over here. So those are all torqued-ish. We'll just check them. Go around and check those. Make sure they're all tight and I didn't forget any. All right, there you go. The next and final step will be to install our little cover here. Where's the screws for there? They are. So there is a gasket in here as well. This one's kind of green, green cardboard. I don't know, whatever you want to call that.
Now again, there may be a torque value for these. I don't feel like looking it up. We'll just make sure they're tight, but not, you know, <laughs> not overdone. And that's really all there is to it. Um, it's not a big job uh, changing hubs on your vehicle. As you can see, that only took us, what, 10 minutes? And now I have a manual locking hub that I can trust for years and years to come without worrying that this thing's gonna lock and unlock on me uh, by accident when I don't want it to. Unless, of course, uh, it strips internally, uh, then I'm hooped, but uh, that's it. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you found it useful or uh, helpful or even just entertaining and ridiculous, um, I hope that you like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, if not, well, uh, I don't know why you watched the whole video. So see you later.